Welcome. Ben Davidson, aka Suspicious Observers, wrote a paper some years ago linking oscillations in the solar polar magnetic field with large earthquakes on here on Earth. This video is going to show that that is complete and utter rubbish and pseudoscience of the worst order. And I don't know whether Ben is being deliberately deceptive uh, to his viewers or is plain ignorant and believes this rubbish or some combination of the two. But the main goal seems to be just to make more money. The paper was called Relationship Between M8 Earthquake Inferences and the Solar Polar Magnetic Fields. There are three authors, Davidson, UN, and Christopher Holloman. Now, I note with some amusement that the affiliation for Davidson was his mobile camper. The article was written in an obscure Indian journal called New Concepts in Global Tonics. In the article, he claims that the occurrence of M8 or larger earthquakes are linked to oscillations in the solar polar field and that they, their reversals may be modulating large earthquakes on Earth. This is nonsense. This paper has already been taken to task by Professor Dave. There is a very good YouTube video that he's put out and the link to it is shown here in red. He points out a lot of Davidson's tricks that he's used before, namely quoting papers uh, uh, that seem to support him when the, if you actually read them, they don't. He points out that Yuan Yen has dissociated himself from the paper and Holloman had serious ethical concerns about the paper. He also points out quite rightly that the paper does not prove the model nor even test it. So it's not really a scientific paper as such. And the figures are terrible. They have no units and are basically illegible. So you can't really tell very much from his data either. But there is an even more fundamental problem with the paper. Davidson completely misinterprets the Wilcox solar polar magnetic field data. The oscillations in the measured solar polar magnetic field in the data are not real. They're just an observational effect. And as such, this invalidates the whole paper. Here is a sample of the Wilcox data over the last few years. You can see these oscillations that Ben Davidson was talking about in the data here. But more fundamentally, you can also see the solar cycle. So I've marked on here solar minimum in red and solar maximum in green. You will notice that the polar magnetic fields are at their strongest during solar minimum, the red areas, and at their weakest, i.e. they're reversing during solar maximum, that's the green areas. In the paper, Davison then lists uh, a series of M8 plus earthquakes over a period of time, early 2000s. He then marks on the Wilcox data, the timing of those earthquakes and points out that they seem to correspond to changes in this oscillation of the polar field. But shouldn't he be slightly suspicious that these peaks are exactly one year apart, as are the valleys, and the Northern and Southern hemisphere are exact in antiphase with one another? Wouldn't that imply that it's something to do with the Earth's orbit rather than real oscillations on the sun? But that never occurs to him. But if it did, he never explains it to his viewers. Apparently, Ben has never heard of the parameter B0, which is the heliographic latitude of the center of the solar disk. In other words, the sun's poles at some times of the year tilt towards the Earth and sometimes the year tilt away from the Earth. And this would change the angle at which those magnetic fields are being observed. And this is the, the curve that you see. The southern pole is tilted towards us in early March. The inclination is basically zero in early June. The north pole is tilted towards us in early September. And it's back to zero again in early December. And this is an annual pattern that's kept repeated all the time. So let's take a look at how that actually affects our observations. We we'll start with B0 at zero degrees on the 7th of June. That means that the center of the solar disk is right on the solar equator. Now we're going to try to measure a magnetic field at say 75 degrees north of value M and we're going to arbitrarily set M at, a, at 100 Gauss, just for examples. That means that the the line of sight field, that's the red arrow, which is the thing that Wilcox Observatory measures, would be M times the cosine of 75 degrees, which equals 26 Gauss. 
So now we will move three months later to the beginning of September when B0 is plus seven degrees. So that means the North Pole is tilted towards us and so that vector M is tilted towards us as well. That will change the value of the line of sight magnetic field to M times cosine of 68 degrees, which would be 37 Gauss. So the same field now measures 37 Gauss instead of the original 26 that was measured just three months before. So about three months later, on December 8th, we're back to B0 being zero degrees, so we again would measure 26 Gauss. Again, about three months later, B0 will be minus seven degrees, so the North Pole is tilted away from the Earth, and so the line of sight magnetic field that Wilcox would measure would be M times cosine of 82 degrees, which would be 14 Gauss. So it would vary throughout the year from about 14 Gauss to 26 Gauss, to 37 Gauss. So let's take a look at Davidson's figure again. Here it is with the earthquakes marked on it. But now I'm going to overlay the variation in B0 on top of this particular plot. So you can see over this period of time, the variation would look like this and you see they correspond exactly to the oscillations in the solar magnetic field for the northern hemisphere and would do the same for the southern hemisphere. So the conclusions we can draw from all of this is that Davidson did not even bother to find out how the Wilcox instrument works. Apparently he never looked up a solar ephemeris, which for somebody who claims to know so much about the sun is remarkable, and wondered what B0 was when he saw it in the ephemeris. Davidson does not even understand Pythagorean geometry, and that's high school math. He does not, then he does not seem to understand how the solar cycle works. And so, I conclude that either Davidson is deliberately deceiving his followers or he is just a solar dunce. Coming soon, I'm going to show how Davidson does not even understand total solar irradiance. Another issue here is using raw data without understanding how the instrument works or using its calibration. Until next time, goodbye.